Hello everyone, I'm Lana Zak and the CBS News Weekender starts now. But first, the judge overseeing Donald Trump's New York City criminal trial agreed Friday to delay his sentencing until after Election Day. Jessica, the sentencing's now scheduled for after the election. So the big question, do you expect that the outcome of the election might have an impact on the sentencing? And Jessica, on that front, we know that Trump's legal team has argued that that Supreme Court ruling on immunity should cover it. We know also uh, that the prosecutors say these were acts that took place while he was running for president and preceded him actually being president. They weren't part of him being president or presidential acts. So how might that all play into a question of presidential immunity? Well, you laid that out perfectly. That is the question, right? The question is whether or not process... Jessica Levinson, thank you. The teenager accused of killing four people and injuring nine others in this week's mass shooting at Appalachie High School in Georgia appeared in court Friday. For so, Dave, I want to start with a focus on the four people who lost their lives. What more yeah. are you learning about them? Well, Lana, that has been the focus all day here at the high school. That it is. Um, let's talk about the case because the prosecutors are starting to put together their case against the Colts. How does the case against the father compare to the other time the Crumbleys uh, were held accountable for yeah. a mass shooting? And why is the father being charged with two counts of second degree murder when four people were murdered? Well, the, the Crumbleys, they, they were uh, parents, they were the father and that. So there is help here for the people who need it. All right, Dave Malkoff, thank you. The State Department confirmed the death of an American citizen in the West Bank on Friday. The Labor Department reported weaker than expected job growth for the month of August. The CBS News senior business and technology correspondent Joe Link Kent joins me now. So Joe Link, when it comes to the feds and cutting rates, so often seemingly bad reports are actually good. So what stands out to you from these numbers? Look, this is a solid jobs report from August, but it also missed economists' expectations. So taking those two factors into account, we can expect the Federal Reserve Chair Powell to cut interest rates in less than two weeks. The big question right now is when you see 142,000 jobs and it misses expectations, how much do you cut interest rates by? And that's the real question when it comes to the is cooling off. It continues to weaken. And we've been tracking this as it's been happening, but it's a situation where the Fed does probably need to act now. And we know from what uh, the Fed chair, Jerome Powell, said a couple of weeks ago in Jackson Hole, the time has come to take action. The question is, will it be a quarter point or will it be a half point, something a little bit more aggressive, Lana? Yeah, we're looking for that, especially since we already know the Fed signaled that it's going to cut interest rates. Um, what, if, what effect do you think either a lower uh, level rate cut or a higher level rate cut will have on the labor market and the larger economy? Well, if you cut rates, if the Fed cuts rates, say, by half a point, it's really signaling that they're taking a more aggressive stance towards the, the spending economy, if you will. It would certainly alleviate uh, if you want to refinance your mortgage, for example, if you bought a home in the last year or so, or if you'd like to get in on a new car loan, if you're looking at credit card, interest rates, things like that. A half-point cut would certainly have a more significant positive impact on personal budgets. But on the other side of things, when you're you're talking about a high yield savings account that brings that interest rate down right and so you'll earn a little bit less on some of the money that you may have socked away if you're still trying to save up for a mortgage or a down payment for example so there's lots of different ways that this can go but overall when you look at the bigger small business uh, landscape as well lower interest rates means Companies and owners, small business owners, can also invest more easily in their own businesses. And so that would also be good for the economy as well. But overall, jobs added continue to cool off. This is a pretty strong report, you know, by definition of what a jobs report is, but also giving fuel to the Fed to cut those interest rates. All right. Jolene Kent, thank you. Thanks. Boeing Starliner is scheduled to undock from the International Space Station in less than an hour, three months late, and without a crew. Well, here on The Weekender, we have employees of all ages keeping things well-rounded. According to a report by Glassdoor, Gen Z employees will outnumber baby boomers in the U.S. workforce by the end of this year. 
Good to have you. Talk to us about what Gen Zers are looking for in a workplace that's actually different from other generations. Yeah, it is different from other generations, no doubt about it. Like, I want to get paid a lot of money. I want to have work-life balance. I want to have all good things. Um, but that's not always how the workforce necessarily plays out uh, when you're actually in the job. So I'm wondering, with this influx of Gen Z workers, should companies and businesses actually try to cater to this generation? Ah, well, you know, um, you know, here at Indeed, here's the beauty of what of what we see in data every single day. We are mental health is a huge um, is a huge factor for them. So, should employers be catering to them more so? What are the skills, experiences that they want and need, and going after those people? And they're usually hard to find. Hmm, interesting. Well, Scott, we mentioned that there are some butting heads that are taking place generationally in the workforce. What are baby boomers' main complaints about working with Gen Z employees, and how do you? I guess, try and smooth that over diplomatically. Yep. Uh, so first, also, it's important to remember that butting heads workers uh, today, in part, that can be attributed to the generational gap. Um, remember, many people started their careers decades and decades ago when there was no internet um, and the place transparency, mental health and work well-being have changed all of that. So that's where some of the understanding is, is yet to be smoothed out. And... Promoting good mental health is good for everyone. Scott Dabrowski. Well, the intense heat that has been cooking the West this week is now seeping into the weekend. For more, here's the meteorologist Alex Wilson from our partners at the Weather Channel. While parts of the eastern U.S. get a really nice fall weekend out west, it is still super hot. Record-setting heat. And in fact, temps into the triple digits for Fresno. Vegas still at 104. Uh, Tucson, 100. Los Angeles closing in on triple digits, as will Medford. Portland cooling off a little bit, but still nearing 90 for your high. Here's a look at the east. 10 to 15 degrees below average. Up and down the 95 quarter. 5 to 10 degrees below average. All the way into parts of the mid-south. That cooler air across the Midwest, courtesy of our cold front. We've got chilly morning lows headed our way. Areas dropping into the 40s Sunday and Monday. By early next week, some of those cool morning temperatures even extend into sections of the southeast, like in upstate South Carolina or western North Carolina. Now, along the front, we're going to keep rain showers. That's why your temperatures stay below average. But farther to the north, where you see some of those shades of brown, drier air, so lower humidity in the wake of that front. Well, for more in-depth coverage, watch the Weather Channel on cable and now live on your favorite TV streaming device. All right, Alex Wilson, thank you. The world is struggling to manage growing piles of plastic waste, and a new report is bringing to light the problem of burning plastics. And so, Ben, of those 440 million tons, how much plastic waste does the world generate, and what really happens to it? It's a lot of plastic waste, 50 other animals. I'm wondering, Ben, how bad burning plastic is compared to these other types of bad plastic disposal. Yeah, so plastic is actually made from fossil fuels. So when you burn it, it releases the carbon dioxide. Parts of the world, tell us more about where we are seeing plastics being burned. So if there's... Thanks for ringing the alarm. Coming up, breast cancer rates have risen by more than 50%. Welcome back to the CBS News Weekender. I'm Lana Zak. Here's a look at some of the top stories where father and son charged in the deadly Georgia school shooting have chosen not to seek bail and will remain in law enforcement custody. 54-year-old Colin Gray and 14-year-old Colt Gray made back-to-back -back appearances in court Friday, two days after the deadly shooting outside of Atlanta. The teenager faces four counts of murder for killing two. Contributor Sam Vinograd joins us now for our weekly national security wrap-up. So, Sam, what do we know about the suspect, his father, and how this incident could have been prevented? Well, as a counterterrorism professional, I can tell you that this was a preventable tragedy. The suspect made a series of statements glorifying violence and was sending very clear signals that he was on a pathway to radicalizing to violence. That's exactly why he was interviewed by law enforcement last year. But law enforcement determined that his actions didn't rise to the threshold of law. Um, the U.S. this week accused Russia of a sweeping campaign to influence American voters. What were your main takeaways from those allegations? Well, I have two. And the first is that the Russian government is both creative and a very adept student of American society. After the U.S. government unveiled the range of Russian actions to influence the 2016 election, 
Russia change course, rather than relying on bots and trolls to conduct its influence operations, Russia shifted to, for example, channeling money through a U.S. company to really buy. Um, as we are rounding out our roundup, uh, I understand you have some thoughts about the news that we're hearing out of Canada. Yes, uh, Canadian authorities have arrested a Pakistani national for planning a ISIS attack against a Jewish center in Brooklyn. We understand that the FBI, through confidential informants, learned about this potential attack, have been surveying this individual and coordinated with Canadian law enforcement to thwart this attack and to prevent this individual from making his way from Canada towards our northern border. So this really underscores the ongoing threat by foreign terrorist organizations to the United States, as well as the criticality of using all law enforcement resources and partnerships available to keep our country safe. All right, Sam Vinograd, thank you. Thanks. Well, back here in the U.S. and on the campaign trail, Donald Trump has secured the endorsement of the country's largest and oldest police union. The former president and a quick programming note will have full coverage of the first debate between Vice President Harris and former President Trump on Tuesday, September 10th. It's hosted by ABC News, but you can watch the debate right here on CBS News 24-7. Pre-show coverage begins on America Decides at 5 p.m. Eastern. Former Republican candidate and former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley is also discussing the state of the race and why she's supporting Donald Trump. She spoke with our Margaret Brennan for this week's Face the Nation. Here's a preview. Well, to see more of Margaret Brennan's interview with Nikki Haley, be sure to watch Face the Nation this Sunday right here on CBS News. It streams at 12.30 and 4 p.m. Eastern. Data from the National Institute of Health is showing a concerning rise in the number of breast cancer cases among Asian American and Pacific Islander women. Dr. Chu, thank you for being here. I was astounded when I heard these statistics. What are some of the possible reasons that we might be seeing this rise? Yeah, those uh, statistics are certainly very concerning. I think one thing, different areas that have different exposure, different uh, levels of acculturation, um, different... Good point about how diverse the AAPI umbrella is, because we know that when you look even further into the data, uh, that Hawaiian, Native, and Pacific Islanders, um, that, that the rates of, of diagnoses of cancer is beyond 50 percent, is more than 100 yes. percent over this same time period. Um, and, and it's not just diagnosis. When we're talking about the national death rate for breast cancer, that in great news has been steadily declining over the past decade. As we divide these groups, you know, uh, up appropriately. And is, are the funding dollars there? Uh, AAPI, the community is smaller than some other demographic groups, and sometimes that means that there just isn't the same amount of dollars. Do you think that we have what we need in order to get some answers to these unanswered questions? Right. I think you've really nailed it. Um, I think there isn't enough funding uh, to look. The Kansas City Chiefs kicked off the new NFL season with a win Thursday night, but there is. The NFL season kicked off with an electric opener between the Ravens and Chiefs Thursday night, but that was Thursday. We are talking about the weekend now, and 13 matchups are set for Sunday, six of them airing on CBS and Paramount+. Plus. The early window will see teams like the Bills, Texans, Bengals, and Dolphins. The late window will see teams out west like the Chargers, Raiders, and Seahawks. They always have great food in addition to the games. Uh, but I also <laughs> want to know, Emery, what teams from each conference you think is going to emerge as a serious Super Bowl contender I know it's early but that's the question well that's what we do right so right. we got to make these proclamations very early so we from CBS Sports HQ thanks so much there's a crispness and a crackle in the air because it is fashion week here in New York City celebrity you here making a debut at New York Fashion Week here on the weekender as well Tell us who, what inspired your spring 2025 collection? Well, so many ways. And do you see that also reflected in other designers and trends? Um, Partnership for New York City says that New York's status as a fashion capital has been at risk following the pandemic because of high costs, designers moving out of Manhattan and more direct to consumer sales. So. As a designer, Michael, I'm wondering what you make of this. How has New York Fashion Week changed? This is obviously your debut. What are you hoping to see? Well, I think it's, you know, it's tough. New York is tough. It'll, it'll break it. You know, 
Strolling down the street and getting ostrich feathers and bespoke buttons is not usually something that uh, that people can brag about. But you get to. I love it. What What are you? What's the What's the thing that you are most excited about for this week for your debut? I'm most excited to really be able to like amplify my voice and the story that. And I'm Thank sorry we have to cut you off there, but we are happy no to help worries. amplify your voice. Designer Mike Lass here on the CBS News Weekender. Up next, we're going to. Bring you live coverage of Boeing's Starliner capsule starting its journey back to the Earth. There you see NASA preparing. I'm Lana Zek, and you are streaming CBS News.